Hey y'all, it's your girl Claudia Jordan, and we're back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. Now sit back, relax, and get ready for this hot tea. Please welcome Al Reynolds. What's up, Al? Hey, Claudio. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday to you too. And our special guest calls for the week, music artist and former contestant on RuPaul's Drag Race, Mo Hart. Welcome, Mo. Hello, everyone. Hi. Thank you so much. I'm such a big fan of the show and both of you. So it's very, very fun to be here. Really? Uh, Have you been watching from the beginning or are you a new soulmate? I've been like a pop in soul, pop out soul. Just a pop in, pop out. (laughs) Also. I'll call you a pop soul. Bam. There you go. (laughs) And and Mo, you you living in L.A. as well? Yeah. In these gloomy Seattle looking streets. Yes. I want all of my money that I pay in taxes back (laughs) because it's gross. It's horrible. But yes, I'm here in Los Angeles. Where are you from? I'm originally from New York, born and raised, and then I moved to Virginia, I think, 01, because that was 9-11, yeah. And then I moved to Kansas City for Bible College, where I started drag after I left the whole, you know, foolishness and became successful, retired my mother, and now I have the number one hit show on Amazon Music. Wow. Well, we are lucky to have you here, so thank you for being here. Are you excited to kiki with us this week? I am really excited. I decided to drink water so I don't get too lit and, you know, say a little too much. Well, that's what we do here, right? Uh, (laughs) I want to make sure I can get to come back. How about that? Okay. Um, (laughs) So for those of you that don't know, we touched upon, you know, you being on RuPaul's uh, show and amazing show. Um, Give the soulmates a quick rundown of your career journey. Uh, I was in Bible college doing nothing. I decided to audition for like a cruise line. That didn't work. I auditioned for Drag Race. I got on the show broke, penniless, and nothing. Had a lot of charisma. They brought me back for All Stars. I was in the top two of that. Then I started to work. RuPaul put me in his Netflix show called AJ and the Queen. That just really kind of lit a burning passion under me to just keep going for my dream to now where I'm doing music full time. I work in colleges, speaking to the next generation. And then I had work for Amazon Music. So it's amazing. All right. That's quite a lot. All right. Well, let's get into the show. But before we get into the show, Al, are you drinking tonight? Or are you being sober? What are we doing? Oh, no, I'm drinking. I'm drinking. Oh, a- I, mean, I have a little something if we need it. I have a bit of uh, Crown Royal here, vanilla. I have the peach. Okay. <laughs> okay. I like the apple, too. Well, y'all got the sweet drinks. I'm going to be sober tonight, but uh, that's not saying that I will be tomorrow. So, all right. Uh, We are just kicking off the show with some feel-good news. Let's get into it. Congratulations to Beyonce on taking over Billboard's Hot Country Songs chart with the debut of her number one song, Texas Hold'em. What are your thoughts on Beyonce dominating the country charts? Mo, we'll go to you first since you are the music person here. What do you think? You know, I think it is very becoming very right. I believe uh, Maxine Waters said, reclaiming my time, reclaiming my time, us getting back and her coming back with a number one just says like, this is what it should be. She gave us an introduction with daddy lessons. So the fact that she's coming this hard just lets us know that she's coming to take over. All right, Al, what do you think? I mean, you know, we've talked about this many times and, you know, they try to hate on our girl. What are your thoughts? Hey, we don't expect anything less from Beyonce. Beyonce is black excellence at its finest in everything that she does. And she's showing it over there in the genre of country music. Uh, She's also the first, right, female artist to occupy number one on the country charts as well as the hip hop and R&B charts. So congratulations, Beyonce. I know you're very excited about it. Another thing that I like about Beyonce entering into country is she's also giving light and shining light on other country music artists who are black. And that to me is the power and influence of a woman like her. Congratulations all around Beyonce and thank you for all the light that you provide to everyone. And speaking of light, she's also shedding a light uh, unintentionally, but uh, she's showing these radio stations trying to show their entire ass by trying to not put her on the playlist in the rotation. And the fans fought back and she's been added to the playlist. Uh, Corey Calloway says, country B, got to grow on me. And uh, actress 29 Austin said, that's right, Beyonce with a bunch of fire. All right, moving on. It seems like more details are starting to unfold regarding the reason behind Kelly Rowland's surprising exit from the Today Show. But first, check out what Bethany Frankel had to say about this ordeal. I've arrived there and the makeup area that you touch up in is is like grab a croissant and some plastic and pray for the best. And it's just not what that's about. And it's an honor to be there and to sit down with Hoda. And that was not the moment for diva expectations. 
All right, Al, I'm going to go to you first on this. What are your thoughts on Bethany's remarks? What do you think? Well, you know, Claudia, I, I'm not sure if you've been, but I've definitely been to the Today Show, and those are the circumstances. I think the problem here is we don't like the messenger. We just don't, we're not fond of Bethany speaking into our Black culture space, especially regarding our Black queens. Kelly Rowland is one of our Black queens that you're just not going to be allowed to say too many negative things about at one time, especially not coming from her. Now, I did say last week on this show, and I still stand by it, that Bethany was right. Bethany's right, but we need to know the details as far as I'm concerned, because like we said, Kelly has never given anybody any problems. We've known Marlon Wayne even jumped into the chat and co-signed for her. So I want to hear from Kelly. What happened, Kelly? It's not your first time being there, so you know the dressing rooms are small. You know the conditions. Did somebody say something to you? Did somebody disrespect you or your team? So for me, even though Bethany is right and I agree with her, I need to hear from Kelly because what happened? What was the undercurrent that made you come out of character and walk off a set at the last minute? Because we don't know you to be that type of young lady. It definitely is not very Kelly Rollinish, the Kelly we know, and she's definitely been unproblematic her entire career. Like she's the example. Mo, what do you think? I second everything that Al said. I mean, we don't know her to be that kind of person that's just going to be a diva and just walk off. But I do agree that, like, you knew where you were going and you know that it's not the diva glam moment. She's been there before. So I do want to know what happened inside of the room, what was said, what was transpired, that, that she felt so, I'm out. I'm going to remove myself from this experience. Now, Claudia, what do you really like? But this between you and I, we on the T here now, right? <laughs> what would would you what would you have done? Because you know, when I think about women in entertainment who's been doing it for so long, I think about you. We all do, right? You've been doing television for twenty years. What would you have done in that situation, even if you were disrespected? Well, I have a really different kind of sense of humor. I do a lot of self-deprecating humor. I kind of beat other people to the punch sometimes. Like, I don't always expect things to go smoothly. And I have a high tolerance of things. Like, I I, I mean, my last show that's premiering this Monday, I, you'll see I'm in a tent with, like, there's snakes and mosquitoes all over me. I mean, I'm all over the area. So, but this is a Today Show. Um, I would have left because, for me, I want to host. I want to host more shows. For mm -hmm. Kelly, this may not be her dream. So it's kind of like, well, if I have time for it, I'll do it. If, I, if not, I won't. I definitely do not think this is about a dressing room. I think Kelly Rowland, you know, she started as a child singer, part of a group. I'm sure she's had to be in many a small dressing room and, and uncomfortable right. situations. She's a long history. Anyone who's been around long enough is going to have a time where the hotel wasn't right. You know, the stage, the lighting. We have our issues, right? Our things that we just power through. I think Kelly is a professional. I work with her. She was a singer at the Miss Universe pageant down in um, the Bahamas. And I just don't, I think there's more to this. And I think because of Kelly's professionalism, I think she's giving this dressing room uh, excuse to still save whatever the real thing that happened. I think mm -hmm. she's still protecting what really happened. Mm -hmm. And just like, let me just give something like that mm -hmm. and take the L. I really don't think Kelly is that girl. I just don't think she's that girl to do that. And I think she's actually being nice by not saying the real tea and, you know, letting them live. That's what I think. That's my opinion, though. I have no inside tea. But I heard people was trying to say she wasn't feeling well and this was just an excuse. And, you know, I think with women, if you say you don't feel well, people are quick to say, oh, are you pregnant? Very you right. know, there is that rumor floating around. But a rumor, 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 rumor. I'm not putting that on Kelly before y'all drag me. All right. Now, sources are implying that Savannah Guthrie, co-host of Today, may be the reason Kelly decided to step away. According to the viewers, Savannah was very disrespectful during the interview when she pressured Kelly to discuss Beyonce stepping into country music. Here we go. Now we're getting into it. Now, although Savannah has not publicly spoken out, her co-host Hoda addressed the situation earlier today and said, I have great love and admiration for Kelly Rowland and I adore her and I want her to come back on our show and I want her to host again. Read between the lines. She also added, she can share my dress room and we'll be in it together. What are your thoughts? And you think Hoda was being shady. Uh, Mo, let's go to you on this. Uh, the first with the fans asking, well, Savannah asking Kelly the question. I don't feel like she was being disrespectful. I mean, the clip started off with Destiny's Child focusing on Kelly. 
Um, so I think in that whole world, this is 20 some odd years of you building your career with this, your best friend, your sister. How do you feel? I kind of wanted a little bit more like she's going to come in reclaiming her, maybe a better question. Uh, are you on a feature song coming up in this new country era? I didn't take it offensive, but I do think she handled it with grace. Um, and then seeing how Hoda came back, I I don't know, you put that little seed of like, there could be a bigger situation. So now my brain is like tingling, like what could it be? Because they did say that she requested a bigger dressing room and J-Lo was in it. So I, you got my my head buzzing. I want to know. <laughs> you know what I think, Al and, and, and Mo, before we go on, I, I want to say this. Sometimes when you do interviews, and like I'm sure she gets asked about Beyonce all the time. People are trying yeah, to get into Beyonce's true. business. She may, this may be a theory that we can throw out there. Maybe she specifically said, do not ask me about this. And they did it anyways. And that can make you feel a way where it's not disrespectful. But if you are asking to not ask about that, because remember that week, there was all that drama coming out and right. there was some racist people kind of showing their behinds about this whole country thing. Right. I don't know, just another theory. I'm just right. putting it out there. Al, what do you think? Oh, I'm torn here because let me tell you something. Beyonce and Kelly are, in my mind, are, are sisters. And so, you know, and Beyonce doesn't do interviews. And 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 so I, I think I'm going to take a two-prong approach to this. Number one is Savannah is a real journalist. Claudia, you are a real journalist. And she's been in the game forever. And we've never had any problems with her disrespecting any of our Black icons, whether male or female. She's always been so heartfelt when she has spoken to them. So I, I feel like, and she asked the question twice, and then she backed off because you know she read the room. I thought she did a good job of reading the room. So I don't want to put Savannah, I don't want to hold her to the fire like this, assuming that she disrespected Kelly. And I don't think Savannah would have asked the question if they said don't, because that's one thing this woman has been able to do in her career is bob and weave with the best of them. And clearly that's why she's been on a Today Show for so long. But hell, I'm like Kelly too, if I'm having a bad day, you always kind of have to walk in that shadow of your sister who is dominating not only the U.S., but the world the same way that Kelly does. I can see where she gets tired of always asking, answering questions about Beyonce. Mm -hmm. And she has a right to say, you know what? I'm proud of her. I'm glad. Can we get back to what I need to talk about, which yeah. is the reason why I'm here? So. Absolutely. I don't know. I, I feel like I understand why Kelly, if she was offended, got offended because she's always got to answer these questions. But I also want to say Savannah has way too good of a track record in respecting our black icons to throw her under the bus like this. I agree with the latest celebrity news that said it shouldn't have been about Beyonce and Destiny's Child. Why not the movie she's in? And I 100 percent agree Agreed. because Beyonce doesn't do interviews. I'm sure everyone that has proximity to her always right. have to catch that every single time. They're like, well, this is as close as we're going to get to Beyonce. Mm -hmm. So let's just ask right. Kelly. Think about 20 years mm -hmm. of feeling like my interview is going to be about Beyonce. Right. As proud as you are about your girl, like, listen, we can all love someone, but be like, can I just have one time where it's just <laughs> about, about my project? I'm here to promote. Mm -hmm. And right. she deserves it at this point. Coming up next, Russell Wilson is changing the narrative of stepfather. And later, Suge Knight continues to spill the tea behind bars. Boy, he needs his own talk show. Like, I will, he, let him out so he can have a talk show. We'll be right back. Keep it locked. How you been liking it, Dustin? I love it here. I love sparring with you. I love talking trash with Claudia. TGIF. What y'all drinking on? Buttery Chardonnay, my go-to when it comes to spilling this tea. 1942, baby. It's been a celebration all week. Every weekday. Yeah. Are you going to have any left? How about a big bottle, gal? <laughs> <laughs> How big is it? <laughs> all right, let's not be sexually harassing our co-hosts this early in the show. Not saying we won't. It's just going to be this early. <laughs> on Fox Soul. When I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm going to take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men. Take care of our home, build a foundation, you know what I'm saying? Love, our money, she's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Ain't nothing like being a father in this world.
My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Welcome back to TGIF. If you're enjoying the show, put some purple hearts in the chat in honor of Mill Hearts purple shirt. That's what we're going to do. And I think Al's got a little purplish bluish shirt on too as well. <laughs> All right. Russell Wilson is finally uh, receiving love after he posted a video of Little Future getting shooting lessons from Steph Curry. Now, Russell wrote in the caption, best shooting coach in the world. Believe it. Believe it. Grateful. Hashtag proud dad. One person wrote, no cap. He's been there through it all. If that doesn't make you a dad, I don't know what it will. He's not a stepfather. He's the father that stepped up. Yeah. Another person wrote, man, future owes this man everything. Get your son, got your son shooting lessons from the best shooter ever and lives with one of the greatest QBs of his time. This kid is set up for success. What are your thoughts on this, Al? What do you think? Oh, Claudia, you know I feel, you know how I feel about Russell. Uh, Wilson and this young man and, and and stepping into the space of being his father. I think the positive here is Baby Future is lucky because he has two very successful black men in his life that are going to make sure that he's taken care of for the rest of his life. And that's wonderful to see. Now, if I want to be technical, though, and respectful to the biological father, then he should have captioned, captioned it correctly. You are the stepfather. Sorry, I know that you may feel like you stepped up into a space when the real father wasn't there, and you may have done that, but at the same time, you're still not that young man's father. You're his stepfather, and it's okay to be an awesome stepfather. I've been following this young lady named Naja Hall. Everybody, she gives classes on how to be the perfect step parent, even when they're absent fathers. And the one thing that she shares in all of her psychology of coaching is that you always have to respect the body biological parent, whether they're absent or not, because it creates a message and a undercurrent in the person in the child's mind. And you can't ever trump who the biological father or mother is. So that's where I stand with that. Still love Russell, but Russell, you can do better and show our future a little bit respect on being the biological father of baby future. Mo, do you agree or disagree? I am torn now. I mean, Al, that was great. And I would say that there has to be that level of respect between, you know, the stepfather and the father, especially because future still is alive. You know, it's one thing if he would have been passed and gone and then you stepped up and continued. But I feel that because future is still with us, he is still a part of his son's life. I do feel that. Listen to now, maybe the some of the language could be, but I mean... I don't know. I'm torn. And my dad really wasn't there. <laughs> my dad wasn't there. And I did have a step that that did kind of step up in in ways. So I did call my stepfather dad and looked at him as one in a sense. So I don't know. You say that that it creates the discord or a little bit like I, I can kind of understand it because I did resent my father at a point. So I could say that. You, you know, I tend to go by um, reality and, and how I, I'm really like there's idealism, what it should be. And that is admirable. And I think that is a way to be to aspire to. And I would 100 percent agree with you, Al, if it was anyone but future. But once this man said, I'll never let a bitch dress me talking about the mother of his child, talking about uh, Sierra, mm. Sierra and Russell, I was like, eh. then he made another song saying, Fuck Russell Wilson, the man who is with your son a lot. And I just felt like Future kind of brings some of this upon himself mm. and allows that to be. But yeah, I do agree the biological should always get like some kind of, you know, they, they I mean, they should be in the number one position. But what do you do with a biological father who chooses to not really do the work? Because, you know, damn well, Future is one of them Instagram dads. If he's with his kids, he's going to post a picture. And yet we never see it. And I wish Future would take it upon himself and stop thinking about this as a competition with Russell and, and get back and just be like, you know what? I see him doing that. I can do it better. And that's my son. Let me go claim my son. So it'll make if he did his job, he would actually make Russell look stupid. 
I would give you that. I would give you that. If he would be like, you know what? I'm a, if they were almost at that, like best dads, whatever that little dumb movie was from the nineties or the two thousands, like where the stepfathers were competing or dads were competing. I feel like that would be, I do think that future should step up in that way. Claudia, that's good. Write a book, girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have some experience in the uh, area of absentee fathers. So I just, I'm just looking at it from the kid's point of view. And like, you know, future little baby futures is lucky to have someone that cares that much about mm -hmm. someone that's not even his, his blood. And I would like for future, and uh, you know, based on what uh, piggyback up Al, I would love for big future to actually take the initiative because there's only a big gap there for Russell to do this mm -hmm. because Russell, because future created that gap, Facts. that void. All right. Rapper Glorilla is getting backlash after thirsting over NBA player, Damian Lillard. Glow took a photo with Damian shortly after he was named MVP of the 2024 NBA All-Star Game. The rapper wrote, who and where is this? Because I want him. Whoever she is can't whip me, so I really don't give a bleep. Now, Damian is still married, but filed from divorce from his wife, Kayla uh, Hansen Lillard, in 2023. Do you think Glorilla was out of line? Mo, let's go to you first on this one. Um, I when I read the article, I just heard Claudia in my head going, "We need to have class, class <laughs> yeah. right?" And I just feel like, hmm, if this was the early two thousands, maybe. But I feel like we live in a day and age where women are just, or just everybody is just very much. This is what I want. Why not speaking into an existence and manifest it? Type T. Um, however, I do feel like the young lady, his ex-wife or future ex-wife, looks like she could put a hurting on Grover. Just <laughs> she looks <laughs> like she puts work Good on ass people. On <laughs> and Gorilla looks like one of those pretty girls who, like, I really don't fire. You know, I stay pretty one, two, ooh, and I'm running type right. T. So, I... Mm. Oh, good points, Al. What do you think? I know you. What do you think? I know you like you black know, love. A, you know, I'm a sucker for black love. Damon Dollar Holla. He's a very attractive man. I see why she wants him. Um, and and the two of them would make a very cute couple. They would. But the way she shot this shot, no, heck no. That that to me is a no. It was disrespectful towards the ex-wife who's going through a, a divorce. You know, that that type of disrespect calls for people putting hands on you. And and like uh, Mo said, don't look like Kayla look like she can throw some hands. She looked like she would end up beating Glorilla up. But in this case, I just wish that she was a little bit more classier. The first part of the tweet was fine or the first part of the post was fine. Yes. You didn't have to go into that. You 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 beat up whoever it is. I just think that was classless. But the first part was OK. But yeah. Mm -mm. So. I have a personal connection to the story. My ex-boyfriend was Damien's coach and we all had di uh, Thanksgiving dinner at my ex's house. Damien and Kayla were there with their family, their kids. We all cooked. She can throw down in the kitchen. So I have no doubt she can throw down in them streets. So <laughs> I, I get Glorilla. You know, she's young. She's, she's a hot girl. She's having fun saying, I don't care who he is. And she's probably joking saying she can't whip me. She's probably joking. But when you know the people you mm. think about, I'm sure that's a broken family and they were together for a long time. Like that was like, I want to say not college, maybe college sweetheart. They've been together for a while. So I I, I, I just think it's just too soon. Like, I can't get on this show and not say something about this couple. I really, Damien and Kayla, I know you be watching me sometimes because we was all real cool. Um, I I really, I, my prayer for you, I know it's not my business, but I would love for y'all to get back together. So I'm not That's with anyone trying out. to get between y'all right now, but um, I, I just think y'all were so beautiful together. And Glorilla, he is fine. But there's a whole bunch of other fine young ones out there in the NBA that you could get right now because you hot. So was that classy? I'm trying. I think you did it. I think you did it. I think I'm, you did it. I'm trying. I'm trying, y'all. All right. Donald Trump was faced with a uh, not so warm welcome after revealing his new sneaker at SneakerCon. Uh, check this out. Wow. A lot of emotion. There's a lot of emotion in this room. Thank you. Thank you. So, so the really nice thing is we have lines, and I want to thank Chase, and I want to thank Alan. <sighs> These shoes are called the Never Surrender High Top Sneaker, and they are priced at $399. Are you rocking Trump's new sneakers now? This is not the Trump that we knew in New York that we'd be uh, around. Uh, 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 what do you think about the uh, White Trash 3000s? Listen... <laughs> Trump need money. 
Trump, Trump's got blooming $440 million of debt hanging over his head. So he's reaching for straws. You know, sneakers have the highest, well, has one of the highest profit margins of close to 40%. It's a $72 billion business. He's trying to dip in there like he did with his book. He made $6 million off his book royalties, making it a coffee top. So, I mean, I just view it as Trump need money. He looks crazy, though, from a branding and marketing perspective, because this is clearly not on brand. Right. Right now, but... You know, desperate people in desperate times do desperate things. And this is what it smells like to me. Uh, Mo, I'm going to jump in because I'm desperate to comment because this is <laughs> how is this wide hip, wide back, sloppy, never worked out, bone spur having, <laughs> make brown and orange paint makeup wearing that is going to run down his face if he ever dared to step foot in a gym, thinking that his brand is in alignment with high top sneakers. First of all, this is definitely, he's hearing the poll numbers that my poll numbers are going up with black men. They ain't no white people wearing no gold shoes like this. This is for us because we like flashy bullshit. And this is a ploy for him to get black men. You should be insulted at these sneakers. And then if you look at the way the stars are set up, the pattern, it's kind of like the way the Confederate flag is, the stars are lined up. He tried to throw that in there. And you know these piece of shit, crappy ass sneakers are thin as hell. You probably feel every little pebble underneath them sold. And you know they were made in China. And your poor followers that you love, you said you love the poorly edged un and uneducated, they can't afford no $399 sneakers. Who are these sneakers for, Trump? Mo, what you think? You think they 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 Mo, Mo, welcome to a Claudia Reed. Welcome That's to why, baby, she went in. <laughs> she went in. No, the shoes are giving me like the gold silver sneakers, like a gold version of the silver sneakers that we got for Amazon for Beyonce's concert. Like that's what they <laughs> look like. Very very cheaply made, quick fast from China. Um, also, I heard that he might get slapped with another lawsuit because uh, Christian Louis Vuitton has a copyright for that red bottom sole. And so he might get hit with that as well, which he should get hit. It's trash. I think he should have came out with a pair of Sperry's if he was trying to come out with a sneaker or a shoe for his, you know, his followers or whatever. It would have made more sense with the whole redneck type of thing, whatever. I don't know. It was trash just from start to finish. And $300. When I can get a, a pair for twenty dollars on Amazon and spray paint them gold, that just don't make sense. So that part, and and Al, you're the you know the brand strategist. There are plenty of things, and maybe we can do a little quick brainstorming session. Like I mean, quick. There's plenty. The toupee. Of that, okay, like there's still other things that he should be. Uh, with all the rumors about him and his issues with all the alleged Al Adderall use, I, I, his bowels. I would say maybe a a a a. a Plus size uh, uh, adult diaper, maybe. Maybe that's where you should go in that direction. Fiber. Al, do you have a product? Fiber. Fiber. I refuse. Yes. I refuse to help this man make any type of money. I'm pretty sure he's probably done every focus group in the book, and he probably said, "What is your contingency? My contingency is men, and we got a growing contingency with black males. So let's all put them in a sneaker and charge them three hundred dollars." You know. I'm sure he's had every market research done around it, but this just doesn't make any sense and it's off brand. Good luck. I'm not giving him any of my intel so that he can get rich off of my brain. It's never going to happen on my watch. Diapers, Trump. Diapers, <laughs> Donnie diapers. <laughs> diapers, yeah. Because you are so full of shit. All right, coming up, Suge Knight reveals some disturbing allegations and later Eddie Griffin is calling out... Oh, he ought to be mad at me forever. Shannon Sharp. We'll be right back. Shannon, it's not personal. It's, it's yeah, trending. We'll be right back. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear. To jog where we please. To wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. How you been liking it, Dustin? I love it here. I love sparring with you. I love talking trash with Claudia. T-G-I-F. What y'all drinking on? Buttery Chardonnay, my go-to when it comes to spilling this tea. 1942, baby. It's been a celebration all week. Every weekday. Yeah. Are you going to have any left? I buy the big bottles, Al. <laughs> <laughs> How big is it? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's not be sexually harassing our co-hosts this early in the show. I'm not saying we won't. It's just going to be this early. <laughs> on Fox Soul. 
This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. And you always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. Welcome back to TJ. I'm telling you, we're going to start releasing what we talk about during the commercial breaks, and it's going to be a whole show. <laughs> that needs to be the full show. <laughs> Please. That's going to be TJF After Dark, and you have to, well, maybe we'll put it on Patreon. Run, that run part, our, put it behind a paywall. Yeah, <laughs> run, run our coin up for that. All right, uh, Shook Knight is dishing out all types of tea while serving time behind bars. The former Death Row Records founder claims that a late TLC member left eye, slept with Chili's baby daddy, Dallas Austin, and allegedly told Chili, we bleeping, but you got herpes, so I made him wear rubber. We good. Oh my God, this is such a messy story. What are your thoughts on Sugar revealing these allegations? Alma, go to you first. What do you think about this? You know Tim? how it is with me, Claudia. I, I say this over and over. I got to get used to this phase of media where men are talking. I mean, men are spilling tea better than women are these days. So it's so awkward. And it's so awkward to see it come from someone like Suge Knight, who's in prison. So if I'm right, left eye slept with Dallas Austin. Chili's supposed to have had herpes. Lepi said she had a con that she used a condom, so she's good, so Chili shouldn't be mad. Chili went and later dated Usher, who also allegedly had herpes. Chili and T-Boz were both having sexual relations with L.A. Reid. Man, this is too much tea in one day. I'm like, what the hell? Like, I don't even know how to separate one story to the next. We got STDs. We got cheating behind the back. We got sleeping with your boss. This is, this is better than TGIF almost. And we haven't even got out of February good. Can we please? Black America, can y'all save some info for the rest of the year? Because these first six weeks have been fire. And I do mean fire. So I don't know. I don't know if it's true. This is some hot tea. Um, coming from the prison house, even hotter, I guess. And I guess, Claudia, I agree with you. This man needs, he needs his own television show or talk show or right. podcast or something. I don't know. Well... What do you think? Uh, I just feel, one, I hope he's getting paid for all of this tea that he's releasing. You know what I mean? I mean, just some kind of coin. It makes no sense. The lady who uh, killed Yolanda is getting coin. Suge Knight should be getting coin for, you know, talking after all of these many years. It kind of grossed me out. And when I read it, I just thought about Usher and that whole thing. So then I was wondering, well, is that the person who gave it to him? That might be kind of fucked up to say. Or like, <laughs> but just saying, like, that was the first thing. Like, Usher has never looked the same to me after those allegations have come out. Like, even at the Vegas show, I still won't. Mm -mm, no, ma'am. And, um, yeah, that just hurts. Like, gross, disgusting. Maybe she's the reason why Left is not with us anymore. I don't know. Oh. Look, is it disrespectful that we're like talking about something when someone can't defend themselves? That's the other thing. Like, Left Eye's not here to defend herself. Could be. So, is it disrespectful, Claudia, for. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really feel comfortable with this story. I honestly don't. Although I did see it in this training, so we have to cover it, right? Because I actually don't feel comfortable with these conversations, period. Like, we can make fun of a little bacteria vaginosis, a little syphilis, a little, you know, HPV. But when we start talking about like, herpes and hiv it, it kind of what'd you say it stays it's not going nowhere i thought you said it stings but i guess <laughs> it could be true at the same time i just feel like it just it kind of feels wrong like on some hipaa violation type thing I, you know what i mean like yeah. if i knew someone's status about you know disease they had and they didn't want it out and then they're deceased that's one thing but like, mm. I just even people that are alive, I just think it's so messed up when like people like run it out, like run their name out there like that. Because sometimes it's not true. 
Very Sometimes true. it's not true. And then once you have that stigma on you, it's very hard to get that thing off. Almost as hard as it is to get rid of. Never mind. Get rid of what? That was a good joke, girl. You killing us with the boom booms. I missed that it. Was boom, I was, boom. I, I, that was the boom boom. <laughs> that was a good one. Mo, tell me what happened. I, I lost she did it. a slow like it will be hard to a slow you know, reveal. A yeah. slow reveal of like it's hard to get that off of you if that allegation just like it would be hard to get rid of. And then she touched her hair softly, baby. That was a good joke, <laughs> baby. Do your stand up special. Do your stand up special. But yeah, uh, I, yeah, the whole left eye thing and her not being with us anymore is it is tacky. But Suge, Suge definitely spills tea. He done told me some stories. I used to see him in L.A. He used to be sharpening up a, a a screwdriver on the sidewalk, telling me old stories about his boys and what they do to people that were disloyal. And he definitely has tea. But Suge, you could have kept this tea to yourself. I don't like this one. Uh, Charlotte Ross Great said, uh, why don't he focus on getting out of jail? And Tea Time said, talking about left eye is very heavy on us all. I agree. And Oprah Gates says, so what if they were sleeping with each other? They were just giving each other a little TLC. Oh, they put the corn emoji. Oh, okay, okay. That was cute. And, and then Jesus uh, Girl Behavior said, and where should get that from? It's so super random. Okay. All right, Shug. Well, I'm sure we'll be patiently waiting for your next episode because your podcast does say a lot of stuff. All right. The New York Police Department is receiving some backlash after their dance team recently performed on a local news station despite high crime in the current migrant crisis. One person wrote, this is where attack dolls are going to? Why the bleep does the NYPD need a dance team? And I say dance team lightly because what the bleep is this? Another person added, I've just accepted we're doomed. A lot of mentally challenged people in this world that are cool with this type of bleep. The mm -hmm. NYPD dance team was founded in 2022 as a way for members to unwind after a hard day of work of frisking black people, killing black people, planting drugs on black people, and chasing after financial crimes and leaving uh, crimes where we really need to investigate alone. What say you, Mel? Um, I was just thinking about, like, I remember growing up in New York in the 90s and them cutting funds for the music programs and whatnot. And you going, y'all cut funds to put funds here. That's not helping any kind of anything. And we have a big migrant issue right now where like these funds could have went to housing, food, shelter, and all these other. Yeah, it's just a bunch of crap. But I mean, what are we going to do? <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to agree. I have to disagree with you, Mo. So first of all, the mayor came forward and said no taxpayers' dollars are going towards the dance team. It's just like the NYPD has a boxing team, they have a football team, they have a hockey team, they have a volleyball team, they have a basketball team, and they couldn't find teams that women officers felt comfortable participating to help get that stress off. So they created a dance team because that's what the officers asked for. And listen, when officers start shooting into patrol cars at innocent black men because an acorn hits the top of their car, then they clearly need something for their PTSD. And for these women to have this outlet to dance, to express, to therapeutically let go, is nothing wrong with it. It's self-funded by those ladies. They get this, 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 this very stressful job out of their system doing this. I think it's not harming anything. And it's a great outlet because men and the new NYPD have been given the other six outlets to let theirs out it's okay for ladies to let theirs out as officers as well no you disagree I think all of that's valid sorry i didn't mean to cut you off Claire. I no i was just saying you do you disagree i yeah i think all of those things are valid but when they say that none of the tax dollars maybe on this dance team but we know that the funds have been cut and still got potholes and all the other kind of foolishness that's in new york that we ain't seen no kind of change so i i just make faces and they're like we didn't use tax dollars I hear you. you know what? I do agree that there should be outlets because they are clearly not able to do their job. I just think the optics of this at this time are really bad. So maybe, you know, do your stuff, do whatever, you know, drills, exercise, dance team, help you out with relieving stress because we do need a better police force. But maybe the optics at this particular time when the, especially New York right now is coming up under so much criticism with what's going on there where the money is getting cut from schools, money is going to migrants, you know, we've had issues with crime. I think the the image of this is pissing people off, but really it's not a big deal, but the image is really not a good look right now, Correct. you know? Correct. Um, Correct. Okay, uh, let's go. A man reveals on Twitter that he will never negotiate sex in a marriage after he divorced his ex-wife for withholding sex from him. The man tweeted, men are miserable because you are withholding 
him from him until he does what he's told. And he added the attitude of sex as currency in my marriage came four years after kids. What are your thoughts on this? Al, let's go to you first. Um, I have to admit, I've been in a sexless relationship before. And, and for someone like me, who, me, who's very sex positive, it's a it's a death sentence. It's a nightmare situation. And um, and and he's right. I, I just really don't think women should be negotiating their bodies to get a man to respond a certain way. I just think there's a more clever or more uh, appropriate way to do that. And 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 I don't. <laughs> And to each his own. But I would say that if women really want to get what they want, only allowing your husband to have sex with you twice a year is the quickest way to find yourself in the divorce line. Twice a year is completely wild. Mo, what do you think? Um, I don't know much about the kitty cat other than it says realm. So I'm going to listen to your points and take some. <laughs> uh, <laughs> listen, um, I think there's a lot of negotiations that go on in relationships. And I don't think they're right if you actually love the person. Like, why do you take away something you know that person right. wants or needs? Whether it's sex, whether it's marriage, whether it's commitment, whether it's, you know, the things that you promise and talk trash about before you got with the, ooh, if you was my man, I would do this to you. If you was my girl, I would wipe you up immediately. People are full of shit. And I think it's really wrong to get, you know, someone under false pretenses where you dangle this thing that they really, really want. And then once you get them, you withhold and then you expect complete loyalty. You actually kind of deserve what you get in that regard. Mm. If you are uh, playing those kind of games on purpose with your partner, I, I think that's wrong to to withhold something from your partner because they're with you to get it from you and not get it from somebody else. And that's just just not with sex for me. I think it's with with you know affection respect, uh effort i just think your partner is a person that should get your best from you and you know your best your best i don't know I what don't... if you open up and become thirds or or just uh, open in a way like if that's not like here you go if you go i'm a lovely i love you you're my husband my partner whatever i'm taking care of the kids i'm taking care of the house i'm doing all of these things i'm being a boss woman i don't want to do it well, then maybe you open up and you say, look, we have strict guidelines. You go there, you do your deed, and you bring your ass home, wash up here. That's something else. But maybe you should open that up if you are not willing to provide that. Or you will find, in most cases, that your husband is getting it somewhere, and now you feel betrayed. I agree with that. Sorry. If you're not going to do it, you you have to give a pass if you want to stay yeah. together. Al, what do you think? Devising a plan. Yeah, I agree in devising a plan. But, you know, I'm I'm nosy and... And 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 very curious. What what is your favorite type of sex, Mo or Claudia? So for me, my favorite type of sex of all times is makeup sex. Mo, I've never had to make up with someone, so I'm saying like maybe stressed out, and the check just hit, and it was extra with the bonus. <laughs> Bonus, <laughs> bonus. Maybe I'm throwing money at your ass while doing it. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I love sex when you finally feel like you're falling in love, like the very beginning of falling in love. I get real emotional. Like I have like had tears in my eyes and the orgasm is so strong because it's like a physical kind of thing and a spiritual, a spiritual. and a like love thing. It's like all at once to me, there's nothing more magical than that moment when you like, I think I love you. That's that sex that's bomb before you bore their ass. Mm, I heard okay. that's a real orgasm when it's physical and spiritual. Other than that, it's just the climax. Really. Your whole body yeah, collapses. You become it one, yeah. See, it's that like happens that. for me during morning sex. Oh. You're like, I don't need love. I just need a bit to be <laughs> set I am. <laughs> no, I need, okay. you to handle, I need you to handle this right here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. The next person that gets it from me is in for it. Okay. Keep it locked. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a clap down. Okay. Hands on your knees. Hands <laughs> on your knees. Yeah, I've been letting it breathe now. It's time for that to stop. Keep it locked because coming up next, Eddie Griffin is calling out Shannon Sharp. And later, Portia Williams' husband's fight for citizenship exposed. We'll be right back. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood. But one day, she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. And uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn. And she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. 
you been liking it, Dustin? I love it here. I love sparring with you. I love talking trash with Claudia. T-G-I-F. What y'all drinking on? Buttery Chardonnay, my go-to when it comes to spilling this tea. 1942, baby. It's been a celebration all week. Every weekday. Yeah. Are you going to have any left? I buy the big bottles, Al. <laughs> <laughs> How big is it? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's not be sexually harassing our co-hosts this early in the show. Not saying we won't, it just going to be this early. <laughs> on Fox Soul. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's got to come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. Welcome back. You know, it seems like we're talking about Shannon Sharp every week. Ever since he dropped that interview with with, uh, Cat Williams, he is all the rage. Okay, comedian Eddie Griffin is coming for Shannon Sharp for reasons unknown. Take a look at this clip from his recent show. Shay Shay. Gay gay. I don't give a f**k. That gay. That sitting there with them tight ass pants on. Wait, uh, yeah, uh, you know, um, look, uh, yeah, uh, you can tell how that drink that you gave. All right, what are your thoughts, Al? Uh, you know what, Claudia? This is kind of upsetting to me, and I'm, I'm trying to really process in my head whether it's upsetting because it could be a trigger or if it's upsetting because as a black community, we can do better. Saying he's gay, he's gay, he's gay, it's like a it's like a broken recorder that we use all the time in our community when we're ready to discredit somebody who is actually doing something positive and, and who's successful. And you know what's interesting? We never heard anything so derogatory towards Shannon Sharp until he started to become a voice in the urban media talk space. Shannon Sharp has been playing football since 1990. He's won three Super Bowls. He's been on television for 20 years, and we have never heard him be dragged so much than how he's been dragged recently. And it just doesn't make any sense to me. Is it jealousy? Like, what exactly has this man done besides be a successful uh, media personality, besides be a great father to his three kids, besides be just like a great person in philanthropy and everything, to drag him and constantly call him out of his name as being gay? I don't like it. And I think, honestly, we, as, as, as the Black community, can and should do better. You know, um, I used to be, I actually, when Shannon Shaw was doing his sports stuff, I loved how he used to take those people to task. And I was, I'm a fan of, of of his work. I think he's really good at what he does. That's why I, you know, I'm still perplexed as to why I'm blocked. But anyways, I will say this. I just feel like these gay jokes, he may, may not. I don't really know what he's doing. I've never slept with the man. I never met the man. I think it's just a little bit lazy. It's a lazy dig. There's mm-hmm. other things you can say about this man. If you want to like use Shannon Sharp because he's a hot topic, I get it. But he's country. He talk country as hell. He wears some tight right. ass suits. You can, there's other things you can like attack him or play with him about that are surface and not so, you know, I don't know. Even though we've made our little like jokes here. It's really about his style. It's not about him. But I just think that um, it was lazy. And I think Eddie Griffin, you have so many years of comedic experience. You could probably come up with a better joke than just saying, Gay, gay, shay, shay. Like, that's not even that, like, that ain't even that dope. It's it's not really, like, it's, it wasn't even funny. I don't think. Mo, what do you think? Um, lazy. Beyond lazy. I'm over the, any kind of comedian, Black, white, or Asian, whatever, just doing the whole, like, gay joke. We've heard, and it's the same one that he was using back when he was, what, on, uh, what's that show on HBO Max that, or... I forgot, but back in the day when Martin Lawrence was the host, that show, like, Def Comedy Jam, like, you're doing the same lame jokes, and I just feel like 
where's the artistry of 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 comedy like let's see it evolve um i'm also kind of annoyed and frustrated at looking at how many straight men love to talk about queer and gay queer and trans people um generally in my experience the ones who are the loudest in the room pointing out who the person is that's gay gay is the person who's gay gay let us remember if we watch the tape he described that you could see shannon's balls oh now, wow i'm gay and I didn't even see all of that. I was, and I'm a woman in. that likes men, and I didn't even I, notice. I didn't even notice. So no, I need to go check in and zoom in. So I just feel <laughs> oh, like the fact that you are highlighting someone else's equipment and anatomy is just very gay. So mm, I don't know. It's just really like. So Mo, are you just doing what Cat, what, what, um, what Eddie did to Shannon? Are you? Oh, are, did I just you, do that? Did, did, did I, you do but, that? But I'm did gay, you? but I'm gay. I like balls, so I might want to talk about those things. But for you to be <laughs> straight, like, it's just, mm, like, you just late. You know what I mean? And it's so unprovoked. That's the other thing. Like, wait, this is a late comedy show, probably in, a, like, a 200-seat theater. Like, nobody really bought tickets. It didn't sound full. You know, it's not going to be a Netflix special. It's just late. I just need for someone to tell me, why is he being attacked so much now about his sexuality? Why is it all of a sudden that every week conversation is what I'm asking? Shannon Sharp has been in the public eye for 40, 34 years. 34 well, he years. Was in a safe, he was in a safer space, right, right when he did sports. When you go into hot topics and this kind of work out and, and you know, any man that's going to sit in the seat, these kind of seats, you're going to get that. I understand that because it's like you're talking like it's kind of considered messy, I guess. Um, I do think his stylist plays a little bit into this because of his scandal with another athlete. But that shouldn't be that should not be like Shannon shouldn't have to take that charge for that, I think. You know what I mean? And I think it's yeah. because he's also very popular. I think there is some kind of jealousy about this. And people are kind of mad their name is or is not getting mentioned on the show. But I do not think Shannon should be attacked like this. I All do right. think it's a little unwarranted. I will say that. It's late. Somebody said, um, Desiree Smith said, Claudia trying to get unblocked. <laughs> 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 kind of. What? What's wrong with that? Oh, Okay. They're talking about he got a big bulge. Okay, I'm just kidding. All right, coming up, Simon Gabadia's fight oh, for U.S. <laughs> citizenship. Oh, I didn't know he wasn't a citizen, citizen, but we'll talk all about it when we come back. Stay tuned for this. Scene 103, take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm going to respond to it? I want you to. Get the vaccine, because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. I hug you. Yeah. <laughs> if it made you feel that way, bro, I would probably do. I love you, man. I love you, too. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, y'all, Portia Williams' husband, Simon Gabadia, was recently denied U.S. Citizen citizenship 
Due to his criminal background, according to reports, Simon applied for citizenship and naturalization, but it was denied in 2022. And last year, he filed an instant complaint and asked the court to vacate the denial and grant him U.S. citizenship. All right, yeah, what are your thoughts? And do you think we're going to hear more about this on the upcoming season of The Real Housewives of Atlanta? It seems like the timing could not be better. Ain't that right, Mo? I thought she said she won't come back, so I don't know if we're going to hear it or not. No, she confirmed she's coming back. Oh, so she, okay, I saw a clip that said that she was in a green suit and she was like, I'm not going. Okay, work, so she's going. I think it gives another storyline. I just hope she's hiding the money in like the Cayman Islands and it is like a Swiss account somewhere because it, it just don't look good. Uh, yeah, it's it's looking kind of horrible, actually. Al, what are your thoughts on this? Um, this clearly is screaming storyline to me. I understand he was denied five times, you know, before, and, and probably more than five times. Um, the bank fraud, the credit card fraud, the identity fraud, the un unauthorized use of vehicle, all that is concerning. But on his last denial, he got married to a U.S. citizen. So he still has access after getting the green card for being to a U.S. citizen. He still has the ability to take the naturalization process, in my opinion. So I, I think this is a whole lot of hype to, 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 to garner attention on their reentry back into the real mm -hmm. hot laws of Atlanta. Because if I'm not mistaken, and I'm sure maybe a soul may can help us who works in immigration, he still has the ability to be eligible to apply for U.S. citizenship through the naturalization process, which is granted after he gets a green card for being married to a U.S. citizen. And we know Portia is a U.S. citizen. Man, every day on this show, I have to face the decision, the tough choice. If I want to go with this little voice or that little voice, <laughs> I go with this little voice. Y'all drag me. Y'all can't. You can't stop talking about it. If I say this, oh, you being fake. I told y'all a long time ago about some of this stuff. Okay, I'm going to say this. Portia, you are beautiful. You are charismatic. You're funny. You're cute. Intelligent. Eh, but you make up for it and all those other things. And I think you're really good at what you do as far as being an entertainer. I'm going to say that. Look, I'm going to keep it a buck, Mo. Listen, you have everything you need to be a star in America. You do not need this dead weight. You got your wedding. You got your five weddings. It, it, it was You got away from the show for a while. You live in that soft life. But you have too much going on to drag someone, bank fraud, uh, identity theft. I done dated one of those guys before, girl. It does not get better. Because once a fraudster, always a fraudster. It's hard to get away from that. And then I start to worry uh, in all, you know, me being on my girl's girl thing. Is this man just marrying you just for citizenship? I would, I would, it would, it would be tough to not think that, you know, does he like her? I'm sure he does. But this is a lot of like red flags to come with. It really is. But then again, why didn't he get a citizenship before? Because he yeah, married because Fallon before that too. Citizen. You're right. She was an American citizen. Yeah, this is, right, right. you know what? You're right. Bravo was, uh, you know what they saying in the chat? Bravo, Messi, they knew. They brought her back right when they probably heard about this stuff. You think that, Mo? Right. I mean, you just, I forgot that he was married to once yes, before. That. So that is a heavy, heavy point. Portia, run, girl, run. You could get who? You can get a lot. There's a lot of men that's checking for you. I'm just saying, Simon. I don't really know about this one right here. All right, last week we yeah. reported that James Wright, uh, Chanel, fired, filed a lawsuit against Krishan Rock for assault. Well, Krishan responded to the lawsuit and tweeted, this big back bitch M-word think he finna get a cent out of me. Bitch, you know you just wasted your money on that damn lawyer, right? Are you surprised, Al? No, I'm not surprised. I mean, good luck. Good luck, James, to get your money. You had to sue to get your money. Is it criminal or is it civil? I mean, best of luck. But in my mind, if this, if any person could represent mind your business and unnecessary, it would definitely this situation right here. Well, 10 seconds. He said it. Amen. <laughs> Ooh, with all them typos in that tweet. Girl, hit me up. I'm going to help you with all that because that was hard to read. There's a lot of, I said that, but it was really that in all of them. Okay. I want to thank my co-hosts, Al Reynolds and Mo Hart, for joining me tonight. Fun show. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for Fox Soul Face Up. Will they be going at it? We'll see you back here tomorrow. Rewatch the show, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye, fellas. Bye, soulmates. Have a good night, soulmates. Bye.